Oh, that girl over there. You can go out. Good morning, Bruce. You look nice today. Is that a new shirt? Uh, no. Well, it's a good color on you. Okay, what kind of mood are you in? I'm in a great mood. Thanks for asking. Got a good night's sleep. I ran five miles this morning. Got to look at my docket, which is very light, which means I can leave at 2.30 and pick up my kid at school. Oh. Oh, what? There's been a change. No, there hasn't. Judge Fastbine broke his collarbone. He slipped. So all his cases have been shifted over here. Don't tell me that. First up, a uh, youthful offender case. 15-year-old girl, Lizzie Turton. No, 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 no. Stabbed her home ec teacher with a pair of scissors. Tell me this isn't happening. Could be worse. How? You could have been the home ec teacher. It's cute. Your Honor, Lizzie Turton's attack on her teacher was both savage and unprovoked. Uh, this woman came very close to dying, and as it stands, will suffer permanent nerve damage. Because of this, the state charges assault with the intent to commit murder. Miss Charles. Yes, Your Honor. My client, Lizzie Turton, pleads lack of responsibility due to the fact that she suffers from a severe mental disorder. Uh, that's a broad category. Please be more specific. Ms. Turton suffers from dissociative identity disorder. And what is that exactly? It's also known as multiple personality disorder. Oh, Your Honor, this is outrageous. Our office was never notified of this defense. I submitted DID as our primary defense. You never said anything about multiple personalities. It's the same thing. I trust you have a psych evaluation to back this up? Yes, Your Honor. Lizzie was in an altered state when the attack occurred. She doesn't even remember it. She quite literally was not herself. Then who was she? She has 13 identities altogether. From what we can tell, she was Vanessa. an appointment with someone no I, I just walked in you help people here right we try what's your name Veronica Welch um I don't want to hurt my baby and I'm afraid that I could I don't want to can you help me come on just have a seat Take a few deep breaths. What's your baby's name? Nicolette. She's eight months. And you haven't heard her? No, but... But it's so hard. I'm working two jobs and I'm barely making it. And when she acts up, I just lose my patience. Where's the baby's father? I don't know. Where's she now? Daycare. The trouble starts when I come home at night. I'm so exhausted and she's so cranky. She's teething. And she can just cry for hours without stopping. I am not going to be like my father. I'm not going to hit my kid. Good. That's the way you should feel. If you could just take her for a little while, you know, just a week or two, just until I feel better. Well, it doesn't work like that. If you surrender your baby to the Department of Children and Families, you may have a hell of a time getting her back. Uh, then what am I supposed to do? Can you hang on till tomorrow? I'll send somebody there to do a complete interview. And we'll talk about food stamps and counseling, other resources, okay? You really promise someone will come? Yes, I do. Can you hang on? Same said, my boy. Been waiting long? Uh, a little while. Sorry about that. Staff meetings. They take forever. So, we have some things to talk about. You know, I sent your stuff to Random House. Yeah. They passed. Oh. It was a very positive rejection. They think you're a good writer, but they're just not taking any short stories right now. Well, I guess that's that. <laughs> 
I also sent your work to Delacorte. Yeah. They passed, too. Okay. But they also like the work. Great. One more rejection, I'll be a certified genius. I also sent your work to Algonquin. Yeah, let me guess. They didn't pass. Really? They want to put you on their fall list. Are you kidding me? I don't kid. There is, however, one caveat. They told me they're missing a title story. That is one piece which will tie all the work together. They need to see that before they make the official offer. Uh, they want me to write another story? Not just any story. A killer story. A story about a killer? <laughs> no. Just something that will knock their socks off. <laughs> Think you can manage it? Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. By Friday? Friday. What, it, it, is it four days Friday? That's the one. Uh. The guy says, are you telling me I'm not covered for flood damage? And I say, yes, that's what I'm telling you. And he says, but how could I not be covered for flood damage? And I say, no one is covered for flood damage. It's a separate policy. And he says, but flood damage Peter. is... It's the fifth time you said flood damage. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was annoying you. Amy, I heard you got a hell of a case today. Mom, how does this stuff filter through? I have my sources. What's the case? I can't say. Multiple personality disorder. Mom! What, like civil? How can you talk about this? I'm not bound by judicial ethics. Mommy, can you cut my meat? I couldn't have been something else, like a dentist. Cut it up smaller. Misha cuts it up really small. She says choking is the number one way kids die. Who's Leisha? Daddy's girlfriend. Her whole name is Alicia Courtney Elvin. Daddy calls her Alicia. Remember when he used to call you Mimi? Yeah, he does love those diminutives. Hey, is Leisha nice? Very nice. Looks a little like mommy. No. No, she has blonde hair and blue eyes. He got her a sapphire necklace. A what? Sapphires to match her eyes. Hey, Amy, this is none of our business. Me and Leisha played count the sapphires. <laughs> All right, how many sapphires? 28. 28. I'm thinking her age. I'm thinking her SAT scores. So, not to change a fascinating topic of conversation, but I finally have some good news to contribute. My book is going to be published next fall. Oh, Vincent. Congratulations. All right. I knew you could do it. That's great. How'd that happen? In a strange turn of events, a publisher read my stories and, um, and actually liked them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's given me an advance uh, if I write another great story by Friday, which I will. I am so proud of you. Here's a toast to one of those moments when having children pays off. Congratulations. <laughs> killed me to see him washing those dogs. Wasting his talent like that. He wasn't wasting it. He was paying his dues. Julian, you okay? Fine. I said something wrong, didn't I? No. Yes. It was the thing about children paying off. That was insensitive. You didn't mean it that way. Honey, can't we just drop the baby thing for one night? The baby thing? Like it's some kind of hobby? Hey, Peter. Why don't you take a break? I'm still eating. No, you're not. I know you just want me out of here. Of course we do. Go. I didn't mean to be selfish. Don't be silly. It's an emotional issue. Unfortunately, most men don't do emotion well. That's awful. We're constantly fighting. Neither one of us seem to be able to say the right thing. I wish you two could just relax and get away. I've been thinking that maybe we need some time apart. Well, that may be the best thing. You think? Well, everyone needs a vacation now and then. Well, my therapist says that sometimes you need to get away from each other in order to get back together. 
If you don't mind my saying so, dear, I think that's hogwash. Mother, people need to work on their problems together. Running away won't fix anything. I don't think Julia's talking about running away. Just maybe some time at a, at a spa or something. I don't really like spas, but I was thinking maybe a, a weekend in the city. Yeah, like that. Isn't it best to be with family when you're feeling low? Maybe. I, I don't know. Why don't you talk to Peter about it? He wouldn't understand. Give him a chance. There's no time like the present. Go on, talk to him. I can't believe you suggested they separate. I didn't mean a real separation. Uh, what, pray tell, is an unreal separation? When you first came back here, you just needed time to think. Now you're getting divorced. It's not fair to compare my situation to hers. People who separate don't get back together. I was just trying to help. Okay. Which one of you made Jillian cry? I did. She and Peter are sitting there in the dark like two characters in a Russian play. I've got to fix this. Oh, Mom, don't. I am not going to stand by and watch this family fall apart. Philip, right? Phil. I have a case I really need you to go out on today. A single mother working two jobs, sick baby, scared she's going to abuse. Why are you shaking your head? Well, I can't do it. I'm really busy. Oh, you're the one. We work for the government, Phil. Overworked and underpaid is part of the job description. Well, I just, I don't know about today. I know about today. This woman is desperate. It's our job to save her. I've made a list of groups and agencies for her to call, along with contacts at each. You take it over to her. Why can't you do it? I'm your superior. I'm giving you a case. End of discussion. One more thing. Phil, while you're there, offer to hold the baby for a few minutes. Jillian, what's wrong? Nothing. Can we talk in your office? <clears throat> I've been thinking about what Amy said the other night, about me needing to get away for a while. Amy didn't mean that, Jillian. No one thinks it's a good idea that you and Peter spend time apart. But having been through a breakup, maybe she sees things more clearly. No, she doesn't. Everyone's marriage is different, and everyone's breakup is different. Not that you and Peter are breaking up. No, it's just that we can't be together right now. I have to get away from him, from the house, just for a little while. Well, uh, where would you go? Well, I was hoping that I'd be staying with you. Me? Well, you're the one who said that families should be together when they're having problems. I meant Peter. But Peter's the problem. Or maybe it's me. I don't know. The point is, neither one of us can take the fights anymore. Maxine, please. I need this. Okay. Get your stuff. One suitcase only. You may stay one week. If you promise to rest and relax. Thank you. Dr. Gilman, where does DID generally come from? Severe abuse. I'm talking about childhood trauma, such as torture. In Lizzie's case, her mother tried repeatedly to kill her when she was small. Would hold her head under the water in the bathtub until she passed out. A small child, two or three years old, is incapable of processing that her own mother is a threat to her life. So Lizzie split off that part of her personality and that altar kept the memory and shut down. When children suffer as much as Lizzie did, they usually don't survive. They either die or go insane. DID is a coping mechanism and quite a good one. We consider DID patients survivors. Thank you. No further questions? Mr. Williams, cross examine. <clears throat> Dr. Gilman? Now, you said there really aren't different personalities in a DID patient. They're all the same person. Yes, that's correct. Then isn't it true that Lizzie Turton is the person who stabbed her teacher 14 times with a pair of scissors. In a sense, 
Yes. Please? But... Yes or no? Is Lizzie Turton that person? Yes. Thank you. That's all. Socrates out. You're not supposed to be out by yourself. No. Thank you. Oh. Jillian. You're here already. I'm sorry about Socrates. He scratched at the door and I didn't know. Yeah. If you uh just walk out with him, he goes right away. What are you doing? I'm making dinner. I thought it would be a nice surprise. But it's not, because you probably went to the market, which was really crowded and got what everyone likes. And here I am making goulash and ruining your plan. No. It's, it's good to try something. Unexpected. My cooking has been in a rut. <laughs> this will be nice. Really? Mm-hmm. Just tell me now, is there somebody in every room of this house? Hey, Mom, it's good to see you too. What are you doing here? Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to work. I, I have to write the world's greatest short story by uh, the end of the week, or I'm back to obscurity. And this has to be done at my house. Unfortunately, yes. My apartment is a zoo, literally. I don't know why you just don't have it out with Doug. It's clear that he should pay more rent I, since I, he I, spends the most time there. I really can't argue with you now. I have got to do this work. Oh, please. Don't let me break your concentration by living here. I want my wife back. Good afternoon to you too, dear. Where is she? We smuggled her across the border this morning. Mother? Peter, she's in the kitchen. If you hurry, you can grab her by the hair and drag her back to the cave. Why are you acting like this? Why are you? You can't just come over here demanding your wife back as if she were property. You're encouraging her to leave me. I most certainly am not. Every instinct I have wants to tell her to go home. But Jillian is family, and I have a very deep need to offer sanctuary to my family. Well, I'm family, too, and I just want to talk to her. Go ahead. When your father and I fought, I used to go to the guest room. I called it the apartment, a place I could go and pretend to be single. I don't know what I would have done without it. Of course, Dad had the good sense to keep his distance. If she's in pain, I just want to help. Leave her alone. That's how you can help. Peter? Now go home. Miss Bossy, you're Lizzie's social worker, is that correct? Yes, since her aunt died three years ago, I placed her with her current foster family. Have you noticed any extreme changes in her personality? I wouldn't say extreme, but there were changes. For example? Sometimes Lizzie's posture would change, and so would the timbre of her voice. Often, she sounded like a little girl, other days like a 30-year-old. Did you know that she was MPD? No, that was confidential information. However, you knew her history of abuse. Yes, I had her records. Could you tell us about that? She was removed from her mother's care after her mother repeatedly tried to kill her. The first family she was placed with abused her severely. She suffered sexual molestation and various forms of torture. She was locked in a dark room without food for days. And that was just the first home. Would you like to take a break, Miss Bossy? No. I can keep going. Would you view Lizzie as a... a troubled child? No, not especially. We all thought she was doing incredibly well for what she'd been through. When you heard what she did, were you surprised? 
Yes, very. It didn't sound like Lizzie at all. With so many people, we could be eating in the dining room. Ah, it's, it's cozy in here. What is this? Uh, it's something wonderful that Jillian made. It's Hungarian goulash. Misha made me pancakes, real ones. She says it's cheating to use the mix. She does, does she? Just saves time if you're a busy working woman. Misha owns her own company. She makes her own shampoo. It's called Floral Theory. I've used that. Who drops by at dinner time? No one came. Miss Welsh. You promised. I went by your office. They said that you had left. How could you just leave? I told you I was in trouble. No one came. It's your fault. Get your keeper. You didn't come. Veronica. Veronica. Come back. Don't do this. You are the most beautiful baby. Hmm? <laughs> Maxine, look at these tiny little hands. I mean, they look like real hands, but they're so much smaller. She's beautiful. Babies are a lot of fun when they're just visiting. Your three didn't just visit. No. And most of them are still here, more or less. This is my last day here. One more revision and I'm gone. Stay as long as you like. You don't mean that, do you? Of course not. Looks like Nicolette's found a friend. <laughs> She's such a good girl. Don't get attached. She's going back. Why can't we keep her? She already has a mommy, sweetheart. Yeah, mommy who obviously doesn't appreciate her. She was overwhelmed and she panicked. At least she didn't hurt her. She gets a point for that. Why? People aren't supposed to hurt their children. Jillian, it can be overwhelming. What you're seeing right now is not what parenting looks like. I would give my right arm to have a child and this woman dumps her off like trash. You're not listening. I'm sorry, there's no excuse. She needs changing. Maybe my dad and Leisha will have a baby. Oh, honey, let's not start with Leisha. I mean, I mean, getting your hopes up, because th they're not even engaged yet. No, but they're going to Japan next summer, so who knows? I'm going to go help Aunt Jillian. Japan. He's taking her to Japan. My, what green eyes you have. I'm not jealous. I'm just annoyed that she's getting to do all the things I wanted and couldn't get Michael to even consider. Right. That's different than being jealous. Did you spend the night so you could get up early and torture me? Yeah. How am I doing? Great. So, with all of us off to various jobs, who's going to babysit today? Jillian took a personal day. You think that's a good idea? It's the best idea I have right now. Well, you do have a long-term plan. Like placing the kid in foster care? No. DCF dropped the ball. I let the woman down. Well, she abandoned her kid. She should be arrested. Amy, you've had help. You have family. You don't know what it feels like to be alone with a baby. I'm looking at this as a judge. Well, stop it. This is my mess, and I'm going to clean it up. Yes. Yes, this will do nicely. What, you like it? I love it. You touched on some of these characters a little in your other stories, and then to bring them together as this thunderingly dysfunctional family. It's the perfect finale. It's mean, isn't it? No. Observant. And Tyler with testicles. <laughs> and that infertile couple. Well, you heard me laugh. And I don't laugh. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. Do what? I'm gonna write you another story. I can't use that one. But I just said it was perfect. Look, that family, that, that's my family. The infertile couple are my brother and sister-in-law. I just, I, I can't do this to them. Vincent, do you think you're the only person who's had to grapple with this? A great writer has to be fearless and ruthlessly honest. You start worrying about hurt feelings, you automatically compromise your work. It's just that they're having problems right now. Time the book comes out, it'll be history. Lizzie, before we begin, I have to know if you understand why you're here today. Yes, ma'am, they say I hurt my teacher, Mrs. Amos. But you don't remember that? No, ma'am. Your Honor, this goes well beyond clarification. 
You're asking me to believe that Miss Turton has no memory of the events in question? No, Mr. Weems. I'm satisfying myself that she's competent enough to participate in these proceedings. She's a juvenile, and I'm allowed such liberties. Yes, Your Honor. Lizzie, you realize you're under oath, and you have to tell the truth? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Proceed, Miss Charles. Lizzie, could you please tell the court what you remember about the day that you attacked your teacher, Mrs. Amos? HOMAC is my first period class, and I hate it. I'm no good at that kind of thing. We were learning how to make aprons. We were cutting out patterns. I was kind of daydreaming, and I guess I cut the fabric crooked. Mrs. Amos came over and saw what I was doing, and she got mad. What did she say? She said, Lizzie, what are you doing? Are you paying attention? She jerked the scissors out of my hand and said, here, let me show you. She started to cut the fabric for me, and I just watched. Then what happened? I was just staring at the scissors. They were nice scissors with orange handles. So Miss Amos started cutting the fabric. Then what happened? I felt nervous. People were looking at me. I tried to take the scissors from Mrs. Amos to prove I could do it. Now, do you remember taking the scissors away from your teacher? No. You don't remember stabbing her? No. What's the next thing you do remember? Lizzie, you have to answer. The next thing I remember is being in the principal's office. The police came. What did the police say? They said I had stabbed Mrs. Amos. But I don't think I could have done that, though. I gave you an assignment. I told you to go and see Veronica Welsh. Why didn't you? I couldn't. Okay, I told you that I was buried here. I ate my lunch at my desk, and I never get out of here before 8 o'clock. She came to us begging for help. Now, let's say you go there when it's more convenient, and the child is dead. Still worried about where you eat your lunch? Okay, I get it. I'll go by there today. No, you don't get it. Have you ever felt desperate and, and out of control, Phil? Yeah, I feel like that right now. Your life is a walk in the park compared to these people. And if you don't get that, you shouldn't be here. What, and give up show business? Philip, you are so incredibly fired. Hey, you busy? Uh, a little. I... <laughs> I... I leave Doug here for one afternoon. I got a mutant strain of TB growing in my sink. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't want to interrupt. No, Peter, come in. You never visit me. What am I going to do, turn you away? I got off early with Jillian gone. I don't have anything to do with my spare time. I'm, I'm sure she'll be home soon. Also, I got to thinking. You and I don't talk anymore. We never talked. Well, it's time to rectify that. We're brothers. We should... Go to a bar and throw a few brews back and get in touch. Don't you think? You want to hang out with me? Yeah. What's going on? You got that look. You get to go home early today. The Turton case is going to get kicked. Why? Her teacher, Mrs. Amos, developed an infection from her wounds. Went to the emergency room last night, died early this morning. <sighs> oh, my God. Uh, early this morning, Lizzie's teacher, Mrs. Amos, succumbed to an infection as a result of her injury. Her death changes the nature of this trial. Your Honor, the state's attorney intends to file new charges. Your Honor, witnesses have been sworn. Jeopardy is attached. That would be double jeopardy? The state intends to file an additional complaint against the defendant 
for murder. I understand. In all likelihood, we'll want to take this out of juvenile matters. Mr. Weems, we can talk about this in chambers. What does that mean? Why did he say murder? I am sorry. Uh, court is adjourned. But I couldn't kill anyone. I couldn't do that. Oh. Oh, God, no. Please, it's not true. No, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when I started writing stories in the sixth grade? Dad, <laughs> Dad went to my teacher and he said, Tell me the truth. Is this normal? <laughs> oh, those stories were incredible. The, the one about the, the guy who finds a Cro Magnon man living in his basement. You remember that one? Sure. I thought you had a great imagination, and I never did have any. Well, that's not true. Yes, it is, but I didn't care. I knew what I wanted. Dad's life, wife, job, and kids. And without that, I don't know who I am. Jillian's coming home. How do you know? Because Mom's going to kill her if she doesn't. I don't want to lose her, Vince. I don't know why I'm telling you this. You're my younger brother. I always had this image of explaining life to you. Women in particular, but you were always so successful with the girls. Well, I'm not sure the girls would agree with that. Jillian was only my second girlfriend. That is, the second woman I'd... You know. Yeah, okay. Been with. Uh-huh. You've probably been with dozens. You want another Mai Tai? So I guess you should give me advice. Look, Peter, you're married. I'm not. You obviously know more about this than I do. You've taught me things. We should just talk more. You know? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Good. Any shoes? What do you know? I won. Come on, you win some, you lose some. Bisha always lets me win. Well, I don't think that's a good idea. How come? I used to let you in when you were little. But you're old enough to be a good sport now. I think it's important to learn. So you don't like Leisha? No, that's not what I'm saying. I just, I just disagree with her about this one thing. Besides, I hardly know her. Does it bother you when I talk about her? No. I'm glad you like her. Okay, time to go to bed. If Daddy marries her, she'll be my stepmom, right? Uh huh. Sit tight, baby. Mommy, can I tell you something? Of course. I don't like Alicia. Why not? She wears too much perfume, and she talks to me like I'm a baby. She does? And she calls Daddy dumb names. Like what? Sugar Bear. Yeah. <laughs> Are you mad at me because I don't like Leisha? No, no. You can't help how you feel. But I, I do think it's important to, to find a couple things that you like about her and, and try to focus on that. Okay, I'll try. See you in the morning. Okay.
Where's the baby? Sleep. I read your story. Oh, Julian, I'm sorry. Don't be. I know that the characters seem familiar, but they're really fictionalized. There's no excuse. If I hurt you, there's no excuse. You actually helped me, Vincent. How? You made me see myself. I have become so obsessed with having a baby that it's consumed me. It's become my identity. You illustrated that very well. It's like I'm a caricature or something. No, Jillian, you're not. I mean, why am I so frantic? About having my own child. There are kids in the world who need parents, and we could help one of them. Peter's right. We should think about adoption. Don't make any decisions based on my stupid story. In that paragraph where you said the frantic need to have children is sometimes the the frantic need to escape your own sad limitations. I need to reward that. The need to. Reinvent your own life to recreate your own identity. That's what I was doing. If I hurt you, I feel really bad. Calling it my work is not a justification. Your job is to tell the truth. My job is to learn from it. Hey, you got a nice, nasty, custody case this morning. Pleasant change from yesterday. They're trying Lizzie Turton as an adult. I heard. I'll never see her again. I'll probably never even know what happened. Part of the job, I'm afraid. You have to try to put it out of your mind. What, the image of a woman trying to drown her daughter over and over? I know. That's hard. And I worry about missing my kid's dance recital. Those things are a pain in the ass, aren't they? Oh, right. You have to go to them, too. I mean, none of the kids know how to dance. They're always bumping into each other. They go on forever. They're in the middle of the afternoon. And if you don't make it, you've ruined your kid's life. You get the lip. Hmm? 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 <laughs> Glad you're around, Bruce. I'm glad I can help. Okay, well, you're late. Let's go. What's going on? Not bringing your baby home. May I come in? Miss Welsh, this is your lucky day. Dumping your baby on a social worker would normally be be grounds for termination of parental rights. But uh, I believe that mothers should be with their babies when at all possible. I promised you help, I didn't provide it. But I'm here now, and we're gonna work out your problem. What do you mean? Well, we're gonna sit down, make a list. I'm gonna outline ways that you can reduce your stress, ways that you can get financial I don't wanna so do this. Work so hard. Do what? I don't want her back. You don't mean that. Look, I you don't understand. I have been going crazy trying to take care of her. And when she was with you, I only felt <laughs> relieved. And, and, and it made me realize that I'm not in any shape to take care of a child. Veronica, you've clearly had a hard time. But don't make a decision you'll later regret. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to regret it. She's your flesh and blood. I know. But honestly, when I look at her, I just don't feel that much. If I take her away, she'll go into the system. And you'll have an even harder fight to get her back. It may never happen. I understand that. And as long as I know that she's being taken care of, I can live with it. Veronica, please. Look, my parents didn't want me, and they made me pay for it. 
I don't want Nicolette to know what that feels like. That's a cop-out. Okay, call it whatever you want. Just take her. Take her. Take her. All right. If this is the choice you're making... It is. find a placement for Nicolette. Her mother won't take her back. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Where are you going? To the movies. Lauren got asked to a sleepover, so I'm free. What are you going to see? I don't know. I don't care. I'm in for the popcorn. You want to come? No, thanks. I'm a little exhausted. Where's everybody else? Jillian went back to Peter. Vincent finished his story and went home. Your house is your own again. You're kidding. You sure you won't be lonely by yourself? I can't wait to find out. See ya. Lucky 